We live in uncertain times. Our normal way of life has been upended. Some schools have canceled classes while others move to non-traditional instruction utilizing online resources. Major sports events have been postponed or canceled. Restaurants have closed their dining areas. Even churches have adjusted their meeting times and in some cases have canceled public assemblies due to the president's recommendation to avoid gatherings of 10 or more. I hope you understand that we do not need a church building in which to worship God. Right now, if you have not said a prayer or sang a song or two of praise to God, please do so. Pause the video. If you're watching on Sunday, observe the Lord's Supper. Find a recipe for unleavened bread. Use some grape juice. Remember what the Lord has done for you in his sacrifice upon the cross. Have you worshiped God today? If not, pause now, and after you have engaged in worship, we'll study a few things together. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said some radical things about the temple. Matthew chapter 24, the first two verses, Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to show him all the buildings. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Such an event was unthinkable to the first century Jewish mind. The temple was an, uh, such an important part of the life of the Jew that the destruction of it would seem like the end of the world as they knew it. His disciples were troubled by the master's words and they asked him privately, tell us when will these things be and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? The words that Jesus speaks in verses 4 through 14 are a warning. Bad stuff is going to happen just as it has always happened. Matthew 24, beginning in verse 4, Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Wars and rumors of wars have existed since the beginning of time. Famines and earthquakes and other natural disasters occur quite often. These were not signs just of the destruction of the temple or of the end of the world, but a reminder that even in times of trouble, the follower of Christ must endure and remain faithful. But then Jesus shifts to a specific prophecy in reference to the end of Jerusalem, Judaism. Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 28. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, Spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. Whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of the house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. 
nor will ever be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand, therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. No longer wars and rumors of wars, but the city of Jerusalem is itself surrounded. Jesus warns that Christians, when that happens, should not delay their flight from the city. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies. Why? Because it would be a hindrance to their escape. Pray that your flight may not be in the winter because travel would be much more difficult under those conditions. Pray that your flight may not be on the Sabbath because the Jews in power, they still observe the Sabbath and the gates of the city would be locked. So how would the Christian flee if the city was surrounded? We're not sure why, but the Roman army temporarily lifted its siege and Christians were given the opportunity to escape. After they were out of the city, the army descended on Jerusalem. Look at verse 28 again of Matthew 24. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. It has been pointed out by many commentators that Jerusalem, who rejected Jesus Christ as the Messiah, is the carcass that Christ speaks of. And the eagles are the Roman soldiers. It's interesting to note that the Roman army used eagles as decorations. Jesus then continues speaking of the same event, verses 29 through 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth shall mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now this is highly symbolic language, and we need to be careful that we understand it properly. The darkening of the sun and the moon and the falling stars have reference to the fall of the Jewish state as heavenly bodies represent leaders in prophetic language. The coming of the Son of Man on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory does not refer to his second coming at the end of time, but rather in his judgment upon the Jewish nation in the first century. There are many times in prophetic language that the Lord is said to come in judgment, but it does not always refer to the final judgment. We have to use our context clues and not force our opinions and beliefs on what Jesus is actually saying. The gathering together of his elect from the four winds is what the late Foye Wallace Jr. calls the grand announcement of the worldwide success of the gospel, the universal expansion of Christianity after the destruction of Jerusalem. The angels of this verse were the four were, were the messengers, the emissaries of the gospel. The gather the, the gathered of the elect, the gathering of the elect from the four winds meant that these messengers would carry the gospel to every nook and corner of the inhabited world. This is the history of what happened. With the downfall of Judaism, the greatest foe of the church in the first century was removed. The path was cleared of the chief obstacle. 
resulting in the universal sweep of Christianity. The knowledge of God covered the earth like the waters covered the sea. Next, we have the parable of the fig tree. As Christ concludes his discussion of the destruction of Jerusalem. Matthew 24, verses 32 through 35. He says, Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Here we have the words that clearly puts everything before them in perspective. This generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Are there any from that generation 2,000 years ago that survive today? The things that Jesus has told them, the signs which they were to observe, they are not still future for us today. They occurred and were fulfilled with the destruction of Jerusalem. All of that was about the end of the Jewish world. But what about the entire world? What about the end of time? But of that day, singular, no longer talking about days, but the day and hour. Verse 36, Jesus says, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. There were signs for the destruction of Jerusalem. There were warnings to get out of the city. But when Jesus comes again for the final judgment, no signs, no warnings. Matthew 24, verses 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Consider the similarities between the days of Noah in the days just prior to the end of the world, as listed by Bert Kaufman, the vast majority will have rejected God's word. There will be no awareness of impending disaster. The normal pursuits of mankind will continue. Ignorance of God and his designs for mankind will continue up to the very hour of judgment. The righteous shall continue to live in close proximity to the wicked until the very last. No thought of judgment or reckoning will disturb the minds of the people. And then it will occur suddenly, universally, in a single day, when men least expect it. In the words of the 1980s alternative song, it's the end of the world as we know it, I feel fine. That's the way the world will be operating. Jesus continues in Matthew chapter 24, through verses 40 through 44. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore that for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. Are you ready? Or have you become distracted? Verses 44 and 46, who then is faithful 
who is a wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Does that describe you? Verse 47, assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. Or are you the unfaithful, unwise, evil servant? Matthew 24, 48 through 51, but if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day that he is not looking for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and will divide his uh, and will appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There will be, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Is that the fate that awaits you? If you, upon self-examination, you find yourself out of step with God, please take care of it right now. If you're a Christian, pray to the Lord for forgiveness. Repent of your sin. Make right whatever you need to make right with your fellow man. If you're not yet a Christian, if you've never been baptized into Christ for the remission of sins, contact someone associated with the churches of Christ in your local area. Let them know that you desire to obey the gospel. I hope that you have found this study profitable. Be safe and God bless.